Hi guys, I'm back. I know I haven't been making videos much lately, but you know, I've been busy. I just moved to Seattle. I'm working for Valve Software, and it's been a pretty hellish move trying to move up all my equipment. My electron microscope's in my garage up here now. It's pumping down, which is terribly exciting. My electronics lab is coming together. Um, so you should be hearing more from me. Uh, this video is going to be a short circuit, and this was brought to my attention uh, from Chris J about three years ago probably um, when we were doing the Fat Man and Circuit Girl shows and uh, he called in and talked about this one bit ADC that used just a flip-flop to do the sampling. So before we get going I need to explain the fundamentals of how the underlying circuitry works and then we can discuss how um, to do the sampling itself. So if we take a 74LS, 74 flip-flop, or any flip-flop really that has a complementary output, um, we feed that back into the D input. For every clock cycle in, it's going to be a transition which is going to be 50% duty cycle. If we influence this feedback loop, for instance, if we suppressed the threshold, which is 0.7 volts for TTL, thereabouts, we could cause toggling to skip in here and do some PWM. And that's what this circuit does. All right, so it's got the same feedback loop arrangement here except for we have a 10k variable resistor in here that we can turn up and down. We have an audio input that goes through a DC blocking electrolytic so that allows the uh, DC offset on the input to be anywhere, but we'll just look at the actual um, sine waves that come through. We have a low pass filter, which is this 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor here. And then we have our clock input. We have our Q, our Q output, which is low pass filtered. And then each of these red spots, the audio input, the clock, before the low pass filter, and after the low pass filter is going to be on the scope here. All right, so we can see here we have a clock. So this big fat fuzzy line is a really fast clock compared to our input sine wave up here. This is the PWM output of, this is Q on the D flip-flop, and this is after the low pass filtering. So it's reconstructed. You can see there's a slight phase change in here, so this is partly because it's being sampled by this fast clock, and then partly the resistor capacitor network is going to change the phase of the output. So, if I change the ratio of, of feedback to input, we can see that there's much less toggling happening on the falling and rising edge, and that's affecting the wave shape of our reconstructed um, sine wave. If we add more more feedback it becomes more like the, the sine wave itself. All right, so let's listen to this. This is the input. I don't know how well that's coming across, but that's a nice clean sine wave. Let's listen to the square wave out, which is this with no filtering. It has a lot of high frequency kind of buzzing sounds in there. Now let's listen to it after the low pass filtering. All right, it's much cleaner. There's still some high high frequencies in there. So I'm going to leave it on the low pass filter and I'm going to start changing the amount of of uh, audio to feedback. So as we start having less toggling and it's more of a square wave, we can hear higher frequency components in there which are a fundamental of the input. And as we come back down, it becomes closer to our original sine wave. Alright, let's do some experiments with the clock frequency. Right now it's at 100 kilohertz sample rate. That's what this frequency is. So I'm going to change that. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. So we'll go back up to 90, 
1500 more. It comes cleaner and cleaner the higher you sample. Okay, so this would be useful if you had a microcontroller or, or an FPGA that um, you could supply a very regular clock to it, say in the kilohertz range, and a digital input that you could sample every clock cycle. So you could sample that PWM and then if you needed to reconstruct it later, say if you stored it into a RAM, you could play it back through um, an I.O. pin and run it through a low pass filter. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is a pretty trick little circuit. Uh, thank you Chris J uh, for coming on uh, Fat Man and Circuit Girl eons ago and telling me about this. Uh, I'm so glad that I got a chance to analyze it and take a look how it works. It's, it's not too bad for only a couple parts. Alright, bye guys.